Well, in the future, if, you know, you encounter something like that, like a wildlife situation, please consider me. Hi. Howdy, Tessa. You busy? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I can talk. Believe it or not, I, I do want what best for everyone in the PD. You have a good foundation to work off of, but there's things that you yourself can work on, and there's things that I'm curious about and how you're going to go about them, and we tried to get that out in that meeting, but everyone was kind of talking over yeah, every, each other. Everyone's talking, and you can't, you can't have, like... It's, it's hard to have a meeting like right. that. No, you don't have uh, under sheriff in mind. I don't think that but would But do you have potential ideas? <sighs> Potentially, I do. I, I just don't, I don't want to hand it to anybody because yeah. I, I, I don't know who's got it. When I said cops shouldn't be committing crimes really? and things like what that, I didn't oh, did mean that they, they need to be fired. Even with you, I, I didn't want you fired. I wanted someone to speak up, someone to say something. Mm. I wanted you to listen. But um, the question is, how do we get there without you needing to be fired? I mean, we do a terrible job of actually like teaching people things. It's it's really bad. So do you plan on maybe having like an FTO system? I have to... a whole plan to rework the entire FTO. The FTO system is garbage. It's so bad. But what are you proposing? Instead of the mentor system, you are assigned an FTO for your first session. Hey, your first session is scheduled. You've made it through Academy. Congratulations, your recruit. We're going to assign you an FTO for your first session, and it will occur on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day it is, right? And this is your first FTO. We assign you an FTO based on somebody who we think would be a good fit for you and what you need to work on and what your learning style is. My question with that is, how do you combat cadets picking up bad habits from bad FTOs? I mean, that, that comes from the FTO evaluation process. Like, for yeah. example, if I'm FTOing, if you were to have a damn live PD with a, a Cornwood ride along live PD of a Cornwood FTO session, but a Cornwood FTO session is very different. It, it is like I, I have the most detailed FTO reports that anybody ever seen. Like, I remember my first FTO report I did recently, and everybody was like, what the hell is this? I'm like, holy shit. I, in a I'm, good or a bad way? Well, almost in a bad way, because uh, maybe uh -huh. it was too much information. There are certain things that I care a lot about, because I think it makes a high impact. And things that make a high impact are recruiting, retention, making sure that the, the cadets have a good experience. Right now, what is holding you back from doing what you want to do? I mean, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Holy shit, it was bad at the beginning. I mean, there's still, like, the answer to everything is no. Let's have an unmarked car. Let's have, and there's just, and a lot of this stuff is like, I, I get it, but it just, we just why can't do, do anything special. Why do you think special. you're getting no's? I think it's because people don't want to make criminals upset. Actually, it sounds insane, but I mean, these guys are damn criminals. Criminals, they, they, if they don't have somebody catching them, then they're not going to have a job because eventually they're going to rob everybody and they're going to have nobody to rob because the people they rob don't have no money no more. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a hard one to tackle, I think. Say you had a, an idea to like go undercover and it went bad. The criminals got mad. Are you prepared to deal with those kinds of consequences? Here's the thing. The unfortunate reality of it is, the thing that frustrates me is not only feeling powerless, but people intentionally misinterpreting what is said or done. I think if you can turn around the culture of the PD. Through what? Not necessarily punishment or doing all that stuff. Just fostering a culture where the PD does the best that they can without breaking the law or doing really terrible things and you guys can be silly and goofy you know and all that I think where a lot of the culture is is going wrong is people are trying to be silly and goofy but they're they're committing crimes and it's making people angry and then the criminals are going extremely hard in response to that but but where is the example because I hear I hear that but I don't I don't know what people are talking about that's why I was trying to ask but I kept getting talked over with shysty i think they were talking about something where he had shot somebody and i don't even um, i mean even denzel didn't know what he was talking about that's kind of the thing though like he should be aware of what he's doing and it's it's that lack of awareness on his part that is a, a big issue for the criminal side of things but did it even happen like what if they're lying if there's anyone that knows that it's me i know <laughs> i know people can embellish <laughs> a lot of this, their side of the story to make themselves look better. Yeah. But I think in that particular instance, it's likely that they were being earnest about it. At the same time, I know Jen, Den Shiesty. Even Even in that conversation, he minus 100 speeched. It's really bad being a police officer right now. Yeah. Like we just stand around and get shot, don't do nothing, get a car stolen. I mean, I was one of those people years ago where I was like, okay, if they steal the car and they, they dump in the ocean, that's, you know, it is what it is, right? And we go chase them or yeah. whatever. But now it's like they steal the car 
car and they take some shit out of it that is like, it, 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 it's a permanent hindrance to the performance of the vehicle. So now you gotta go get another one. It's a very literal like grief, right? We can't even stop to go get food without somebody trying to take our shit. I don't know what the solution is to that, to be honest. Th there's just been a lot of shit that's been adding up for me and it's, it's just, it has worn me down to the bone. I'm sorry about the damn dolphin. I didn't mean, I, you know, I, I, I was just trying to put him in the damn pool. And I was told it was salt water or whatever. I accept your apology. All right, well, thank you. I'm... <clears throat> I'm sorry for stabbing <laughs> you in the throat. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate <clears throat> that. Thankfully, thankfully, I had... You got my second chin, not my first or third, so thankfully I'm okay. Yeah, well, in the future... If, you know, you encounter something like that, like a wildlife situation, please consider me. I, I don't want to be a vigilante. I never wanted to in the first place. You know, you probably could. We'd probably never catch you. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> I no. was dipping my toes in, Cornwood, uh -huh. and the water felt pretty fine. And that's scary to me. With the state of the PD right now, it is not ready for people like me. And I'm, I'm a nice person. I mean, I've, I've thought about it, too. I'm like, that's why I thought about, that's why I was going to quit whenever they suspended me. Because I said I could do my job better if I wasn't a part of the PD. And the red tape that you're stuck behind right now, that's what I was talking to you about on the beach. Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't quit because of, you know, distrust of the PD or, or hatred for the PD. I still love the PD. I love everyone there. I quit because it destroyed me. High Command destroyed me. If, if you're wanting to go undercover and you're wanting to do certain things, you do need to be prepared for what might come with it. Undercover is a risky business if you are not following through with everything that you want to do. If you're investigating something, do it properly. Don't, you know, go halfway. Right. And you won't run into problems where people are going to have valid complaints. They might complain. They're going to complain no matter what. They're criminals. They don't want to be arrested. Right. But if you can back up what you're doing with your evidence, with everything that you've done, and you've done it the legal way, the correct way, through the correct processes, they're not going to have ground to stand on against you right now they have ground to stand on against the pd because the pd has been doing things the wrong way and that's the issue it's small things it's little things little investigative things that are issues but it's all compiling it's compounding and it's becoming an issue and people are reacting to it yeah that's fair i mean i had some shit the other day where people want to argue with me about all kinds of shit it goes beyond, hey, Cornwood did this, or Cornwood, you know, it's, it, it goes beyond that. When people are, like, talking about me violating their rights and shit, and I'm like, holy hell. Like, I, I, I'm telling you, I got in, like, a 15-minute argument with damn Zolo. There was a drug sale call. We show up on scene, and he's running around. I stop him for questioning, and when you stop somebody for questioning, you can frisk them to make sure they don't have a weapon on them. Uh -huh. He is bitching and moaning and screaming, saying I'm violating his rights just by frisking him. And now, here's the problem. He goes and he tells other folks that, and it's all Cornwood vi violated my rights. And, and people are too, they don't know the law. They're too dumb yeah. to understand. So then this narrative gets yeah. spun up, and then they just believe shit that didn't happen. People will hear secondhand information, and that secondhand information will now sculpt their opinions of me. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And it's, it's wearing me down. Here's the middle ground. Was there like a weapon thing or something that you were there for? Or was it just the drug sale? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure there actually was a, a branching goal. But, so but what I would wasn't. recommend, I know, I know that you're well within your rights yeah. to frisk someone, but sometimes, and here's something that I learned through a lot of my work with the PD, a frisk sometimes can escalate a situation. So maybe when you are approaching that situation, approach them first, have the conversation, explain to them, hey, we had a weapon out call, ease them into it a little bit more and then they won't have as much reason to freak out and then once they start being like oh well i don't want to be frisked then you kind of have more reason to be like hey hold on we need to frisk you and at that point they can start disobeying they'll they'll start doing other things that open them up to more of a problem here's the thing though i, I do that a lot it's like i'm wearing damn mittens kind of taking care of these guys at a certain point it's like man they're, they're like frightened little bunnies yeah it's, and you, it's you gotta be careful not to spook them otherwise they are going to escalate in the in the worst possible ways. Are you are you are you at the graveyard? Yeah. Patty, what are you doing here? I didn't think you'd want to be here. My dad's grave. Yeah, I miss him too. He had a flower here and I wanted to clear it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I it's a hard thing to um really settle on. 
popcorn with. I don't know if there's ever going to be a proper solution for you. I wish you the best of luck in whatever you decide to do. I don't think you're out here doing every everything wrong, but I think everybody has something they can improve on no matter what they do in every situation. And I want you to look at that and, and think about that and try not to take it too much to heart because it doesn't necessarily mean you're bad and you suck and, and everything you're doing is wrong. And I don't want that to be your takeaway from anything that I've said either. No, hell, I know. It's just like, man, I can't even have a conversation with folks anymore. I try really, really hard to to do what's best for everybody. Do you think that becoming the sheriff is going to be worthwhile? I don't know. I know there was a lot of people really relying on me to get this thing open. And I'm just so worn out at this point that I'm like, look, it's happening. Maybe I should just let it go and, and maybe somebody will figure it out. Maybe you'd benefit from a position like that. what Tribble was back in the day. Maybe. It was a captain, wasn't he? Or not a captain, but like... He was always sheriff. In everybody's heart and in everybody's mind, he was Sheriff Tribble. No matter what on paper it said, he was the sheriff. Yeah. He was here for a long time. He had a seniority, much like you do. It came with a lot of respect, and that was like kind of the thing that he worked for the most. I mean, this, this thing couldn't have come at a worse time. You think? Pretty much everything that's happened since I've been in the city, like I said, has been just... I mean, honestly, I've had one positive thing happen to me, and that's one in liaison. Other than that, I really haven't had anything positive happen since I've been in the city, if you really think about it. You know, Lenny came to me in a vision, and I'm holding on, I said, look, this people are relying on me. And Lenny tells me this, he says, people are relying on you, but who can you rely on? <laughs> and I, I don't know. Maybe that's part of the culture issue. Yeah. Bro, I don't know. none of this is true, Morpheus. You're a moron. Huh? What are you calling Morpheus? Oh, I don't know. Apparently my gullet's open, and it won't close. <laughs> I don't know why it won't close, but my gullet's open. That's okay. It's all right. But you see what I'm dealing with? Sometimes my internal thoughts out, get right? a little bit crazy. Yeah. I mostly just ignore those. Yeah, it's hard for me to. Oh, there we go. They're, they're closed. If I listen to most of my internal thoughts, there would be a lot more people stabbed in the throat. Actually, you're probably right. Well, what, what's one thing that you really want to do right now? What's what's one thing you are prevented from doing right now? Thinking straight, because I'm so damn upset. <laughs> Yeah. So there's that. <laughs> well, I can't help you with that. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> you you mentioned uh, undercover stuff. Right. We don't have any sort of undercover SOPs. We have like a bike unit, no SOPs for that. There's just so much shit that just hasn't been done. And who, who does that fall on? Whose responsibility is that? I'm assuming commands or it goes above command. And I don't know, because from what it Has sounds like to me... Has anybody tried to write bike SOPs? Yes. That's the thing that's who? crazy. I think Maisie Graves. Were they submitted? I believe so. Like, Kit wrote up a bunch of stuff for Motorcycle. We had uh, bike SOPs for Maisie Graves. Like, detective stuff is being worked on. I mean, we, we just haven't gotten, like, we have no support at all. And it's very, very frustrating. Yeah. Just like everybody else in this city, you need everybody here. Like, you, you have to have all three sides of the equation. Most people will look at it as, like, two sides of the equation. And there's not. There's three. Because you have damn criminals out there doing criminal shit. You have police officers that have to stop the criminals from doing their criminal shit. And then you have civilians that are the damn backbone of the city. And most folks don't realize that. Sometimes when the police department doesn't approach criminals the right way, then the civilians feel like they're being done wrong because they're trying to live a good life you know, not do crime, not do any of that shit. But then other people are running rampant doing whatever the hell they want without the police stopping them. Oh, I just got stabbed and robbed at Senior Bones for the eighth time today. What, what am I doing here? I might as well just go start stabbing and robbing people too. Yeah. This is something that I told the captains. We have to be hard on crime when it's people victimizing other people. Because if we're not, it's a little bit. And it's just going to grow and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And this whole he said, she said. And we have to stop that. Let the court handle that. Yeah. Otherwise, what's going to happen eventually is all the civilians are going to feel like, what am I doing? They're either not going to be here anymore or they're going to start doing crime. I'm a very, like, bird's eye view type of person, and I have a lot of years of experience. And, and most people just want to ignore that. And I'm not right about everything, but I kind of have been as far as projecting how things are going to happen over the course of the last five months, unfortunately. 